Well, boo-hoo. Some feminists have said that they're retiring because of hate, and not at all because their debunked arguments have been soundly rejected by anyone with a shred of sanity. In a Washington Post article entitled Feminists are so besieged by online abuse that some have begun to retire, Michelle Goldberg writes as if there's some kind of crystal knacked underway targeting feminists, quoting one person who even suggests that mean Twitter comments are causing post-traumatic stress disorder. The culprits are, of course, men, the men's rights movement and the Gamergate community. Organised misogyny, she calls it, because we all know that feminists would never engage in organised misandry. One feminist quoted in the article states, I doubt myself a lot more. You read enough times that you're a terrible person and an idiot, and it's very hard not to start believing that maybe they see something that you don't. Have you ever considered that maybe everyone's calling you an idiot because the things you say are idiotic? That's not harassment and it's not hate. Let's get this straight. If you're a public figure, you have to expect some form of harassment. Let's stop being fucking children in the playground. If you express controversial or opinionated viewpoints, you're likely to face some form of backlash. I get harassment and even death threats from social justice warriors all the time. What I don't get is a sob story in the Washington Post. What I don't enjoy is an open platform provided by the mainstream media to portray myself as a victim. Free speech comes with risks. There was a guy in Austin who threatened to shoot up the Infowars office, Charlie Hebdo style, and gun down everyone in it. None of us have retired. None of us have gone whining to the Washington Post. We get on with it because we're adults. But let's face it, this isn't about hate. There are unhinged lunatics on both sides of the debate. Always have been, always will be. But while ABC News heaped sympathy on top feminist Anita Sarkeesian for alleged death threats which are actually denied by police, one of Sarkeesian's fans was on YouTube threatening extreme physical violence against her anti-feminist critics. I will fuck you over for that one of these days if it's the last thing I ever do. I just want to make that clear, Phil. So to pretend this is all one-sided, and that feminists and their supporters are all sweetness and light, as Goldberg does in her Washington Post piece, is completely dishonest and agenda-driven reporting. This is really about feminists attempting to rescue victory from the jaws of defeat by whipping up a hysterical, contrived media outrage campaign that portrays them as a persecuted minority. This fabricated sense of victimhood is their last refuge since they're not doing so well when it comes to winning the argument using actual facts and logic. As Joanne Minelli commented on my Facebook page today, quote, I thought feminism was supposed to be about empowerment, but it's become more about using their sense of victimization as a badge of honor. And they wonder why so many women are reluctant to identify themselves as feminists. And that's the point. Despite this mass media and entertainment industry campaign to shove feminism down our throats, polls show that just one in five Americans call themselves feminists. Less than a quarter of American women identify themselves as feminists. This is clearly a huge defeat for feminism. Yet they're so deluded, they keep claiming they're winning the debate when the numbers clearly show otherwise. Let's not forget what a monumentally awful last few months it's been for feminism and its supporters. From Gamergate, to Shirtstorm, to the debunked UVA rape scandal, on virtually every front, radical feminists not only lost the debate, but turned an army of young women off feminism because of their obsession with this obscure intersectional nonsense, joyless cuntiness, authoritarian bullying and social engineering, while ignoring genuine threats to women's rights and safety, like the actual rape culture that was sweeping Europe, predominantly perpetrated by Muslim men, which feminists dare not mention because it can't be blamed on the evil white male patriarchy and because they're rampant hypocrites. Again, this is about advancing the narrative that we need to resort to online censorship in order to silence the hateful criticism 
being directed at the poor victimized feminists. Because that's the only way they can win the debate, by slapping virtual duct tape over the mouths of their ideological adversaries, and corporate media outlets like the Washington Post are only too willing to give them a helping hand. Check out the other videos, subscribe to the channel, I'm Paul Joseph Watson for Infowars.com.